system curve is a nonlinear plot of primarily the head loss due to friction. What we see here on a pump curve is we have our total dynamic head or head added by the pump is on the y-axis and we have our flow rate on the x-axis. Okay, so this is the system curve, the nonlinear plot. Goes up like this. Primarily head loss due to friction, and it starts at that total static head, which is the difference in water surface elevations from the source to the destination. Okay, and there's some equations that show that there. And the head loss due to friction, of course, is the head loss due to friction on the suction side and the discharge side. So that was the system curve. Another curve is what's called the pump performance or characteristic curve. And these are identified by and given by the pump manufacturer. It's the same units. It'll be in units of feet for the total dynamic head and flow rates usually in gallons per minute or cubic feet per second. And in these particular curves, as your flow rate increases, your head decreases. Now we see different curves there. We have Z RPM, Y RPM, X RPM. As you increase the rotations per minute of the shaft, increase the speed of the pump, you're going to shift up the characteristic curve and vice versa, you would shift it down if you slowed it down. The same applies with the impeller diameter. If you increase the impeller diameter, make it a bigger pump, and of course increase the casing size with it, uh, it would shift up the characteristic curve. Where this is going, as you know, is what's called the operating point. It is the intersection of that system curve, which is developed from the system that you're evaluating, the head loss due to friction in the piping, we know how to get the head loss due to friction equations and what are the differences between the source and destination tank total static head. It's that intersection of those two system curve and characteristic curve right here. At that operating point is where you can determine what is the flow rate straight down and what is the head or total dynamic head that is delivered by that pump. Okay, so manufacturers will provide you with the characteristic curve. You run the calculations on your, on your system curve, see where it would cross, and make sure that it's going to meet your requirements to pump your fluid. Now, there are efficiency lines that you don't see here, but there's a, a most efficient point, which may be right at the operating point. It's the other thing you're looking for. Uh, or on either side of the operating point, there might be inefficiency points, depending on your system curve, if, if it is maybe on either side. So you look to see where your pump is operating most efficiently. This view here is another example of total static head, that capital H, from the source tank to the destination tank. So we talked about changes in rotational speed of the shaft, right, the RPMs. And when we go to the top of the next page, 24, we see what's referred to as affinity laws. And these are relationships where if you increase or decrease your head, your rotational speed, or N, your flow rate, Q, and your pump power, or brake horsepower, P, in these equations, you have these relationships where you can identify, if you were to increase the speed, what would be your increase in power or increase in flow rate, etc. Same applies if you were to increase or decrease your impeller diameter, like I mentioned. I said how you would shift up the characteristic curve or shift it down. It also is a relationship as you cross your system curve with your flow rate and your head and your power. Thank <music> you.